Today we're going to talk about drift fishing setups for the Dick Knight Spoon. I'm with Jim Stahl of Northwest Fishing Guides. Jim is also a Dick Knight Factory Team Pro Guide. Jim and I both fish the Dick Knight Spoons throughout the season and especially in the fall for salmon. The drift fishing setup is essential for any angler in the Northwest. In fact, Anglers throughout the country and even the world are using Dick Knight spoons to get into their fish. So let's talk about the drift fishing setup today. So Jim, when you're setting a drift fishing setup for Dick Knight spoons, do you really think it's all that different from drift fishing other setups such as corkies and yarns or eggs? I don't. Um, I basically fish it the same way. Uh, I'll go, sometimes I'll go to a fixed lead instead of a sliding lead, but it's basically the same uh, drift fishing rig other than take the corkies and the hooks out of it and add the dick knight. I agree. You know fishing a dick knight spoon is not complicated. The key to the dick knight spoon is the action of the spoon. If you're in water that's too fast and causing that spoon to rotate you need to find some different water because that spoon is not fishing effectively. Okay so another thing to consider is the type of water you're fishing and maybe how fast you're retrieving the spoon. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? To me, the the retrieve, my wife calls it painfully slow, but you cannot fish these things too slow. Um, to me, a good speed is, you know, one crank um, maybe per second or even one crank per two seconds. But the biggest thing is you'll know that if you're in too fast of water by just kind of looking at it, put the spoon down in the water and if it's wobbling, you're good, but when you're casting and retrieving, you're not sure what the speed is. If that lure comes back and it's spinning on the end of your leader, that's telling you you're fishing it too quick. I agree. So at that point, either slow it down or it could be a combination of the water and retrieving. Sometimes you don't even have to crank the reel over. It's almost just like a dead drift, like you're totally fit drift fishing for steelhead. So each situation is different um, and you can kind of tell by water speed if you need to retrieve or if you don't. Folks, when you're fishing the Dick Knight Spoon, when you start fishing your new piece of water, the first thing you need to do is look at that spoon as you're bringing it back into you. That's your opportunity to gauge how fast you need to reel and achieve the action of the spoon. So let's talk about the setup for drift fishing a Dick Knight. The first thing we really need to discuss is your line weight for your main line. Um, if you're fishing from the bank, you're probably going to fish a little heavier monofilament uh, for your main line. Uh, I actually fish a 10 pound main line uh, when I'm fishing from a boat. I think it gives me more sensitivity. What do you think? Yeah, I'm also a firm believer in the 10 pound main line. Um, I'm, you know, in theory that if you're, you're running your 10 pound main line and you've got a two pound lighter leader, you're going to break off the leader, which hopefully, you know, you don't have to tie as many knots. Um, but I'm a firm believer in the 10 pound main line. Exactly. You know, and we need to talk about leaders as well because leaders are going to affect how your Dick Knight spoon actions. I like to fish a couple pounds lighter on my leader. I fish an eight pound leader if I'm fishing 10 pound main line. If you're fishing from the bank, you may want to consider fishing a 10 pound leader if you're fishing 12 pound main line. What do you think about leaders? I'm a firm believer in the eight pound for your, your leader. Uh, most of the time we're in a boat and we can chase them, you know, drop anchor. Off the bank, I do think, you know, a 10 or maybe even a 12 pound a leader. Another thing that I'm a huge fan of in the leader is the either Maxima Ultra Green or a fluorocarbon. And the reason I like that is they're a stiffer mono. Um, I actually think it slows that spoon down a little bit. It's not that limp noodle out there. And that's probably one of my biggest keys is I'm a I'm a six foot Maxima Ultra Green leaders almost. That's what I run continuous, so. And I think the key to that stiffer leader when you're fishing the Dick Knight is especially water speed because you may want to fish yep. some water that is a little faster. It is holding fish yep. and you want to fish that. So if you're fishing a stiffer leader, it's slowing that lure down and helping you out in that faster yep, water. Yeah, correct. Excellent. So let's talk about getting our terminal tackle on our leader. Okay, so the components for your drift fishing setup are going to be a 5 millimeter bead. And now that bead depends on the size of the eye at the end of your rod. I like this bead because it protects my rod tip if you over reel this terminal tackle into it. So you need a bead to protect the eye of your rod. 
then you're going to need a snap swivel. I use a size 10 snap swivel on all my terminal tackle setups when I'm drift fishing or plunking or any other setups for the Dick Knight Spoon. You need a four millimeter bead. Now this bead protects the knot that goes to your barrel swivel. That's what that bead is for and it needs to be smaller. It's just protecting the knot. And then of course you're going to need some leader material and the size dick knight that you plan on drift fishing. This is a number one. You can drift fish the other sizes of dick knight spoons. So let's get our terminal tackle on our main line. I have my main line in my left hand. I'm going to grab my 5 millimeter bead, which protects the eye of my rod. Once I have my 5 millimeter beads on the main line, I'm then going to grab my size 10 snap swivel. Then I'm going to slide my 4 millimeter bead on. So this is what your setup should look like just before you tie your barrel swivel on. Now we're going to tie our barrel swivel on to the end of our main line. Okay, so this is what your terminal tackle setup will look like on your main line. Your 5mm bead, your snap swivel, your 4mm bead, and then of course at the very end, your barrel swivel. Okay, so let's get our leader onto our barrel swivel. So now we have our leader onto our barrel swivel, and now we're going to tie our dick knight onto the end of our leader. Now it's very important, guys, that when you're tying your dick knight spoons onto your leaders, don't attach anything other than what's on the Dick Knight. The number ones and the Wii's come with a welded ring on the end tied directly to the ring. The number twos have a small barrel swivel on tied to that. Don't use any snap swivels. It changes the action of the spoon. So we'll tie this on using the same knot that I used to tie my leader. Six or seven twist, come back through the uh, knot and cinch it down. So now, in review, you're going to have your terminal tackle, your leader material, and your number one spoon. The only thing we need to do now is add lead to the snap swivel. In this particular case today, I'm going to use some pencil lead. We attach this on and this is your setup for drift fishing a dick knight spoon so folks as you can see actually putting the terminal tackle and getting your setup for drift fishing is very simple um, one thing we do need to talk about jim is the weight that a person is using to drift fish yeah it, it varies from hole to hole um, i actually keep uh pencil lead in lengths cut anywhere from an inch and a quarter to two or three inches um, you're kind of you're gonna have to guess the first time when you do it um, anywhere from I'd start out with with an inch and a half to you know if the water's moving pretty good if it's rather slow then I might try an inch or an inch and a quarter but your first time through it's gonna be kind of a guess um, after that the biggest thing is you've got to have these things on the bottom you don't want too much lead that you're hanging up on the bottom but you want to have enough lead that you're bouncing the bottom and feeling the bottom I agree Folks, if you have too much weight on your snap swivel, what will happen is your weight will drag on the bottom and it will have too much tension and that spoon will actually now flop down to yep. the bottom of the river and you're going to get hung up. Yep. It's guaranteed you're going to get hung up. You should just tick across the bottom because the hydraulics of the river are going to help the action of your spoon and now you're fishing effectively. Okay, folks. You can fish the Dick Knight Spoon with not only pencil letter slinkies, but you may also need to use heavier weight. You may have to use what's called a dropper. Uh, Jim, you have a dropper tied up there, and let's, let's explain to the folks what these droppers are for and why we use them. 
Uh, the main reason that I use a dropper is I try to get the spoon a little bit farther from the bottom. Um, in a real snaggy situation, I almost always go to a dropper because it's going to break a lot easier than, you know, the pencil that is usually once it's hung up, it's hung up. Um, I'll usually run the dropper, if I'm running a, a 10 pound main line and an 8 pound leader, most of the time I'll run the dropper on a 6 pound just because it's the first thing I want to break. Um, the, the distance or the length of that is anywhere from, could be 6 inches, could be a foot, could be 16 inches. Um, I don't think that that makes a, a huge difference, is just make sure that you get the right amount of lead. Most of the time I have 3 sixteenths, half ounce, um, and up to 3 quarter ounce of these cannonballs. They're super easy to do. We sit there and make them in the, the off season in the winter. Um, but I think it, to me it's a more effective than the, uh, the pencil lead, just because of the, rounds, the round shape of it, and it bounces along the bottom easier. You know, these droppers also help you get into some deeper water that sometimes may take a little longer for that pencil lead to get into. But don't forget, guys, you don't want to use too much lead on these droppers. The concept is the same. It's just the fact that you need a different amount of weight to get to the bottom. It's not reasonable to have four inches of pencil lead yeah. when you could simply use a, a dropper. Yeah, yeah, it's it's way more effective. Um, I think it's a way more efficient design. The the pencil lead, you know, if it's it'd be harder to get it exactly the same length unless you're sitting there with the ruler and you know some of us will do that, but that's usually at home, not on the river. But yeah, it's super easy. If if you know half ounce is working, you can change everybody out to half ounce, and all day long you should be good to half ounce unless you move or the water level comes up and then you need to go up. But you know. The, the key to this is you don't want it just banging the bottom all the time. You want it where it's like tick, tick, tick. My biggest thing is what I usually have people do when I have them cast it out there is I'll have them find bottom and then lift that rod up and start to retrieve. But sometime during that retrieve, I'll have them lower the rod tip and hopefully we're going to find bottom again. That's when I usually know that I have enough lead on. So folks, the drift fishing setup for Dick Knight Spoon, it's easy. Take your time and make sure that you're achieving the proper action of the spoon. Dick Knight has been helping anglers catch fish for over 60 years. It's time you start letting them help you get your fish. Until next time, thanks for watching.